Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an exponential logarithmic equation, kind of like a mixture. We have x to the power 1 over log x equals log x, and we're going to be solving for x values. So, let's get started. I don't know, I'm probably going to present two methods at least. That's what I'm thinking at this point. So let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I want to use substitution. So let's go ahead and replace log x with something. How about, how about log x setting it equal to t? This implies because the base is 10 when the base is not written, by using definition x becomes 10 to the power t. Remember there is a 10 here which is not written normally with base 10 because we use the decimal system. So if you replace x with 10 to the power t and log x with t everywhere, this is what you're going to get. 10 to the power t to the power 1 over log x which is 1 over t equals log x which is t. So you get a really simple equation. So you got rid of all the logs and this just turns into an exponential equation which is going to simplify a great deal. So what's going to happen next? t and 1 over t cancel out. And we end up with t equals 10. Awesome. It was simple, right? Great. So now t equals 10, but what is t and what is x? x is equal to 10 to the power t. So since x is 10 to the power t and t equals 10, then x is going to be 10 to the power 10. So in other words, it's 1 followed by 10 zeros, which you can basically write as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And if you kind of split up into groups of 3, you're going to notice that this is actually 10 billion. So x is pretty large, that's why the graph is not going to look nice. When you consider the graph of two functions here, x to the power 1 over log x, which we'll talk about in detail, and log x, they're going to intersect, but it's going to take a while for them too. So one of the graphs is going to look like this, as you know. But then for the other one to intersect this one, it's going to take a while. That's why showing the graph is not going to make sense. You have to zoom out like crazy. Okay? Great. So that's one of the approaches. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And see if we can come up with a third one maybe at the end. So second method, let's rewrite our equation. We have x to the power 1 over log x equals log x. For my second method, it's, uh, this is something that is commonly done, by the way. It's a very common method, logging both sides. And since our log is already in base 10, let's go ahead and use the same base, which will make sense, right? So log both sides, base 10. And we have a log already on the right-hand side. It's just going to be log log x. Okay? Now, using properties of logarithms, we can bring this down. So this becomes 1 over log x times log x, interesting, right, equals log of log of x. Again, these two are going to cancel out. And notice that when we use the first method, we named uh, log x t, and then they canceled out. Pretty much the same idea with different, uh, obviously, methods, different approaches. So from here, we get the following, log log x equals 1. Great. So you can kind of think about it differently. You can do 10 to the power both sides or just use uh, think about the definition. So first of all, think about log what equals 1. And if you are familiar with logarithms, since this is base 10, you should know that log 10 is equal to 1. Why? Because it's log 10 with base 10. When you have the same number, it just becomes 1. Because the question is 10 to the power what number equals 10? The answer is 1. So here the question is 10 to the power what equals that? And that's going to be the next question we're going to tackle. Anyway, so hopefully you get the idea. Log log x equals 1. This implies that log x is equal to 10. Because 10 to the power 1 equals 10, which is log x. All right. So now we get another equation, which we have to solve because we kind of had nested logs. Log x is equal to 10 now. And again, using the base idea, 
the base to the power 10 must equal x. So in other words, x is equal to 10 to the power 10. Make sense? Which is again a very, very, very large number. Like, super duper large. It's not like Google, like 10 to the power 100 or Google Plex, but it's still a very large number. Okay? Who cool, cool. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the behavior of these functions. Even though we're not going to be looking at a graph, we could kind of do a hand sketch. But let's go ahead and explore this one first. What is x to the power 1 over log x? You probably see that a lot uh, on my channel because I kind of like uh, these kinds of questions. x to the power 1 over log x. So if you want to call this third approach or third method, whatever, you can do so. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to simplify this first. So what is this equal to, right? What is that? It just without setting it equal to something else. I mean, without using the original equation, I should say. Okay, forget about the right-hand side. Let's just focus on this function. What is this? Can we graph it? So let's call it f of x. And then we can basically log both sides again to understand what is going on with uh, f of x. But notice that you, you've probably seen expressions like x to the power log x equals, I don't know, 10 to the power something. And you can log both sides and solve this problem easily, right? Let's say this is 10 to the fourth. We log both sides and we get log x squared equals 4, so on and so forth. But this is different. This is x to the power 1 over log x. So you can kind of write it in uh, several different ways. Let's go ahead and log both sides first. That's going to be my first approach under third method. So log f of x equals log x to the power 1 over log x. Awesome. Then we can move this to the front. That's what is cool about logging both sides. And we get log of f of x equals 1 over log x times log x. And this becomes 1. So log f of x equals 1, which means f of x equals 10. Well, what is that supposed to mean? It means this is a constant function, right? Even though it contains some variables, they kind of cancel each other out and the result turns out to be a constant function. So let's go ahead and look at it from another perspective. I just want to share with you this idea because I think it's really cool. So hopefully you do know the property of logs, which is a to the power log b with base a is b. Okay? Or should I write it differently because b is usually represent, uh, represents the base, so log a with base b is equal to a. So it's always equal to this number because this is a base, this is a base, they're equal they kind of cancel each other out. Make sense? So in this sense, if I use the, uh, what should I use? I can write this as 1 over log x with base 10 and using the reciprocal property. What is the reciprocal property? Wow, there's a lot of properties, right? Well, the reciprocal property says if you have 1 over log a with base b, it just becomes log b with base a. These two switch because that's how you get reciprocals. That's another property. So here, we can go ahead and flip this by writing it as x uh, log 10 with base x. But when these two are equal, you get this as the answer, which is 10. So the left-hand side is a constant, as you can see here, and that is equal to log x. So it's kind of like this problem is equivalent to log x equals 10, but it's just disguised. And also you have to make sure that x is positive in both cases, right? So this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.